Zimbabwe's finest, Zimbabwe's finest, finest, finest radio. ZFM Stereo. That is Messi. It is the cleanest of clean finishes from the best on the planet. It's time for the biggest sports stories. Liverpool, the champions of Europe, are top of the world. The biggest interviews. That uh, such a great spectacle is ruined by such such thuggish behaviour. And all the analysis right here. He's the one player that has the arrogance to think that he can play in any stadium in the world and any pitch in the world in front of any player in the world and take them on. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. What a phenomenal weekend of sport and it's going to be good to review it right here on CFM Sport on a Monday because that's what we do this and every single Monday in the studio are Mike Alois, our producer Sean and my name is Barry. What can you look forward to on the home front? League champions FC Platinum took another step towards a fourth consecutive appearance in the CAF Champions League group stage when they completed a double over Costa de Sol of Mozambique in a preliminary round second leg match at the National Sports Stadium on Saturday. We'll also have an international sports news feature and India captain Virat Kohli has identified Hadik Pandya as their bankable match winner for the next four to five years after the all-rounder dazzled in the series clinching T20 international victory over Australia yesterday. We'll then take you around the world in 60, taking off in England where head coach Eddie Jones called criticism of his side style of play totally disrespectful after his side beat France 22-19 to in extra time to win the Autumn Nation. Cup at Twickenham. In fact, that headline should read, beat the French third team. In Spain, King is a kibi what candy. Smashed the half marathon world record by 29 seconds, becoming the first person to break 58 minutes at the Valencia half marathon. And then we'll touch down in Bahrain, where George Russell admitted he was absolutely gutted after an incredible yet heartbreaking Mercedes debut at the Sakir Grand Prix, finished without a deserved maiden Formula One win. And the second half of Monday's show is always the Castle Lager World Football Report where Hyun Min Son and Harry Kane were Tottenham's heroes once again firing their side back to the top of the Premier League table with a 2-0 win over rivals Arsenal in front of 2,000 fans. In the Bundesliga Bayern Munich boss Hansi Flick says he was satisfied with his side's result against RB Leipzig on Saturday despite their defensive frailties. In La Liga Atletico Madrid overcame a rusty first half display to beat Real Valladolid 2-0 at home with goals from Thomas Lemar and Marcos Llorente uh, sending them clear at the top of the table. All of that and so much to look forward to. The power play is first. It's the turn of Evanescence. This one is called The Game Is Over. The game might be over but the show goes on. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. Get in touch with us online at ZFM Sport. We're on all platforms, including YouTube, where you can catch up with uh, back editions of the show. If In case you missed some, or in case you just want to check on what we said and what our comment was on various issues out of the world of uh, sport, that's at ZFM Sport. Our individual handles are at Mike, my daughter, at Shachon Tafire Nika, at Gazaman14 for Alois, at Barry Manandi is mine, and then, of course, at Mark Pozzo and at Chris Medzi are uh, for those members of the team that aren't available today. Let's dive into it. On the home front, we're talking CAF Champions League, Football Way League Champions. FC Platinum took another step towards a fourth consecutive appearance in the CAF Champions League group stage when they completed a double over Costa do Sol of Mozambique in a preliminary round second leg match at the National Sports Stadium on Saturday. Pure Platinum play went into the match carrying a 2-1 lead they secured in Maputo last weekend and left it until late to guarantee their safe passage with a 2-0 win to complete a 4-1 aggregate victory. Uh, it looked as if Norman Mapeza was uh, almost um, holding something back in that first half uh, or FC Platinum looked a little bit off colour but that second half and towards the latter stages of the match we saw something that 
vaguely resembled an Omnum Mapeza FC Platinum. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he he brought in Barry, uh, a, a couple of players that then changed the complex of the game, and uh, mainly Stan Lingala, uh, mm. who came in as a target man. Uh, and with Stan Lingala, uh, uh, Lingala playing up front, I think we saw the best uh, out of uh, Perfect Chigwende. Right. Uh, we did talk about uh, that budding combination earlier on in the year when we saw them out at Barber Fields when they played against Highlanders in the Castle Challenge Cup. They terrorized the Highlanders' defense. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you got uh, guys like uh, uh, Peter Mudua uh, in that defense, but they were run rugged. Uh, and we saw a bit of that because yeah. Sterling Gala does the job very well. He holds the ball uh, up very well. He's able to bring his midfielders and his wide man into play. And he makes good runs as well, freeing up a lot of space. Because if you take a look at some of the runs that he makes, he's able to take two of the center backs with him. Mm. And then he frees up space for those who are playing wide or coming through midfield. And so that's when we saw FC Platinum get into the ascendancy. But I was a bit concerned, Barry, that the Mozambicans were able to take, to take the game to FC Platinum, especially yeah. in the first half, where at times FC Platinum looked like they were riding their luck. Yeah, and we haven't seen FC Platinum challenge like that, Alois, uh, in, in some time, uh, especially in the early part of that first half, where Costa de Sol had the majority of the possession and actually created a few guilt-edged opportunities that had they been sharper in front of goal, uh, sort of gone a different way. Yeah, you know, it was worrying, baby. You know, when you see uh, an away team actually actually dominating, there are, time, there are times when you, you are thinking that you know what we've got our shape let them play mm. let them have the position but we are solid we are comfortable but we were not mm. we we're not comfortable they could have they could have scored they could have gone on to actually control the game but unfortunately enough they didn't and uh, FC Platinum obviously like Mike said they came back into the game in the in the uh, in the second half possibly because of Ngala why because FC Platinum they always do the slow build-ups so when you're doing a slow build-up you actually it's better off you have that because they don't attack quickly yeah. so he holds the ball very well he allows the other guys to catch up so that was actually a very good uh, a very good situation for FC Platinum I think that's why they started uh, playing but I, I, I wouldn't want uh, a repeat of that uh, first half uh, for FC Platinum when you get into the next match. Uh, the, the ref did them a favor uh, as well you've got to say that because the complexion of the game could have changed uh, had Costa de Sol got the penalty that they deserve yeah, because the yes. gift Belo clearly handled the ball uh, in the in area. Box, yeah. Stonewall penalty. I don't know where the referee was looking. I don't know where the assistant referee was looking, but they didn't give it for one reason or the other. I mean, mm. uh, to be honest, if we were to call a spade a spade, it was a scandalous decision. Yeah. Now, if Costa de Sol gets that penalty, sticks the ball into the back of the net. Now, this is in the, it, it, this is like uh, 10 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes uh, in. On, yeah. It meant that Costa de Sol would have been the ones holding the qualification ticket. Mm. That would have forced FC Platinum to come out and attack them and then Costa de Sol would have found more space behind uh, FC Platinum and that would have made the game very interesting and tricky for, for, for FC Platinum but like I said they rode their luck in the first half they certainly rode their luck and uh, in truth had that happened we would have all enjoyed a very open and entertaining affair as it is William Steamer and Perfect Chikwini getting the goals for FC Platinum that sealed their passage into the next round which is another almost qualifying round because they need to play two legs with against Tanzanian Giants uh, Simba uh, and uh, that will happen the first uh, leg of that match happening on the 22nd of December. Tell me about what Norman Mapeza has done with Gift 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 uh, Mbweti and um, Perfect Chikwende. Where Perfect Chikwende is playing in a in a more removed uh, uh, role and Gift Mbweti playing almost as 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 a full back. Is that working for you? Because these are players who are exciting going forward. And we saw it when Jinyai was put on in the second half and uh, Mbweti was given the license to go forward. There was a lot more attacking impetus. Uh, get into the mind of Norman Mapeza for us for a second. Uh, I, I'm not sure because it's not the first time mm. that we have seen Gifton Mbweti playing in that position with, with Norman. I, I, I don't know he has got this um, uh, feeling that Gifton Mbweti is a very is a roving uh, fullback. He's got the energy. Yeah, he's got the energy to go back and yeah. forth. I think that's the idea behind behind all of it. But if it's if it was about, I would I would, I would rather have him starting from a little bit further up. Yeah. yeah, up yeah. Because then then he has got that energy he can actually use it for takeoff and to get behind the defense quickly. But then when he's coming from the back, you can actually be seen, you know, even as, as fast as you can be. They can see you from afar that there is coming. <laughs> you know, there is coming. So I would rather he plays more I, more up front than at the back but um, he has got his own idea he has, he has done this before so mm. probably they know what they've been doing at training 
Uh, I was also concerned, guys, by the fitness levels as well uh, mm. of FC Platinum, the conditioning. Yeah. Uh, the intensity levels certainly went down, especially after the 60th minute. You had players like uh, Brian Banda. I thought he started off very well. He was one of FC Platinum's better players in the first half. Right. Uh, got on the ball now and again. Uh, was uh, 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 shifting with the team when they were in, uh, in the offensive uh, transitions. He was moving with the team when they were defending. He was getting behind the ball. But if you notice, as the game wore on, mm. Brian Banda was fighting himself more often than not uh, behind the ball yeah. uh, and that was worrying for me Ralph Cohen did there a couple of times where Ralph Cohen did I was dispossessed yeah, didn't even chase back he right. was walking back so that's a fitness issue he was clearly yeah. tired yeah. Uh, and so that concerns me uh, about FC Platinum they're gonna have to become a lot fitter they're gonna have to be in a better condition mm. when they play Simba who are in the middle of a league program at the moment yeah. and they're playing week in week out sometimes in midweek I was gonna ask exactly that wasn't that the the, the fit issue wasn't that what gave FC Platinum almost the edge towards the latter stages of the game because Costa de Sol looked out on their legs and it created the space that they required I mean perfect you that goal marvelous goal but in truth he ran past and just a one-two uh, simply into the half space and bang goal largely because Costa de Sol was out on their legs and it was more like FC Platinum was fitter than Costa de Sol uh, and still yet not match fit as Mike is pointing out. Yeah, I think it was more of lethargy than than than, than fitness. I think uh, uh, Costa de Sol played uh, to the FC Platinum's advantage is the spongy pitch okay. at the National Sports Stadium, whereas these guys, they are used to the hard surface. So now when you are now playing on a spongy uh, surface, you, you get your muscles yeah. worn out. I think that's the advantage that FC Platinum got yeah, there very because heavy the pitch mm-hmm. became mm-hmm. so heavy and spongy. Okay, yeah. let, it's almost like the old barber fields that allows yes. you to play yes. there during your heyday <laughs> yes. where uh, a barber fields heavy underfoot very thick and teams yes. when they were going to barber fields they will be worn out 65th yeah. minute 70th minute you don't want to run no you more. don't want to run anymore and that's when highlanders because they were training on it week in yes. week out that's when the highlanders uh, team now would start attacking you mm. and get on top so i think that's what happened to costa dozo as well i totally agree with the alloys it was a, a, a function of the surface more yeah. than the conditioning of the Moz- mozambicans okay let's throw forward now and uh, look at their next opponents for them to get into the mini league they've got to beat uh, simba s of Tanzania Simba Sports Club to use their full <laughs> their full uh, uh, name and you think to yourself of the two opponents that they could have got Plateau United of Nigeria Simba SC of, of Tanzania there was no easy choice so in truth whatever came out of the hat your thoughts on this next uh, encounter for FC Platinum yeah it's not going to be easy you know when I looked at uh, Simba and uh, Plateau I actually thought that it was Plateau that was going to proceed and, and play FC Platinum <laughs> but then we're playing against Simba but you know what you know the ends of time you know rolling back the ends of time talking about playing against a Tanzanian team you remember Zanzibar team Teams, Tanzania, Maji, Maji. Yeah, yeah. Those are teams that we could actually <laughs> beat. Maji, yeah, Maji, beat five yes. zero. Who will be talking about how many? Yeah, how many are we going to hit them? You know. But now things have changed. Now we are actually worried about Simba. And, and you, you know, know what? And you know one of the things that has changed, Mike, is the fact that FC Platinum is going to travel to Tanzania and they're going to be faced with possibly a full stadium, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that that's the worry, Barry, for me. Uh, the the atmosphere. Can they handle the pressure? Uh, we've just seen the return of fans in England. Just two thousand fans and if you had watched the game uh, between Liverpool and Wolves you'd have seen the difference that 2,000 fans yeah, can make, can make yeah. the energy that the players feed off and even just the atmosphere they were able to create as 2,000 now with Simba we are guaranteed 40,000 because FC Platinum is going to be an attraction yeah, and remember yes. uh, for, for Tanzanians Zimbabwe has got a reputation of producing good teams yes. and good players yeah. and so there's going to be a huge uh, amount of interest uh, for Simba fans to show up at the stadium the only thing that could work uh, in FC Platinum's favour is a social media campaign right now courting <laughs> young Africans so yes. that young African fans show up yeah, at the stadium and support. to support FC Platinum. That could be something that uh, those at FC Platinum <laughs> should think about. It's a, it's a novel idea for those that are uninitiated. There's a huge rivalry uh, between young Africans uh, popularly known as Yanga and mm. Simba SC out in Tanzania. So it's literally courting Caption United fans to support a team that's coming to play Dynamo. And uh, they their free scoring side Barry if you take a look at the standings in Tanzania and, and that's all the, the data that we'll have to go by sure. uh, they've scored 29 goals Barry which is actually uh, 10 more than any 
other side. They also don't concede a lot. They've just conceded five, which is also joint best in terms of the defensive record in the thing. So they are bang on form. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think FC Platinum are going to have to outscore uh, Simba. Uh, mm. If they are to win this, so Norman Mapes has got to think about ways in which he can be creative, ways in which he can get FC Platinum playing front football, yeah. not what we saw at the National Sports Centre. Yeah. That won't do yeah. uh, versus Simba. Yeah, and w- listen, we'll give uh, uh, Norman a pass in the sense that he had that uh, uh, two-one advantage coming out of Mozambique, was leading in the tie. Thought to himself, look, I don't have to go out there; you need to come out and play. But certainly, I agree with Mike. He's going to come out, have to come out and uh, play. So we'll see how that one plays out. Like we said earlier. The first leg against Simba of Tanzania takes place on December the 22nd with the return leg uh, being taking place on January the 5th. At that point, we will know whether it's Simba or FC Platinum that progresses to the mini league phase of this edition of the CAF Champions League. Coming up, we'll take you and uh, let you know what's happening in sport locally. Hi, my name is Sean Williams, Zimbabwe cricket captain. You're listening to ZFM Sport. Z. Your local sports news roundup starts with cricket where the Mountaineers women were crowned the inaugural cricket 50-50 challenge champions after they defeated Rhinos by six wickets in a rain dress final at Takashinga Sports Club yesterday. Chipomugere Tiripano equaled Josephine Nkomo's 85 runs as Mountaineers coasted to 198 for four in 37.3 overs to win the match via the Duckworth-Lewis method. The Mutara Bay side won the toss and put the opponents to bat first. Rhinos started off slowly and we eventually bowled out for 210 runs after facing 46.3 overs. In rugby news, the Zimbabwe Rugby Union, the ZRU's President Aaron Jani has welcomed the decision by Rugby Africa to avail additional funding to unions on the continent as the local rugby governing body continues to prepare for the safe resumption of rugby activities next year. ZRU were last week named among 11 of the 39 rugby unions affiliated to Rugby Africa set to benefit from a grant for the successful and safe preparation of the 2021 rugby season. We wrap it up with news from the volleyball scene where Mkoli Sindlovu was elected president of the Zimbabwe Volleyball Association, the ZVA, at a congress held at a Mashingo Hotel during the weekend. Lovu was the association's treasurer, got 12 of the 20 votes, cast to beat ex secretary general Tawanda Sitole. Lovu replaces Ringisai Mapondera, who is now secretary general of the Zone 6 region. It's not Christmas on ZFM Stereo without Aisha. Hey, yo, what's up, it's your boy Aisha. You already know what it is. <laughs> My station, your station. Merry Christmas. We play hits like this. Why you always in the mood? Turn it up. I can play new. I ain't trying to tell you what to do, but try to play cool. And this. And this. Z. Alcohol may be hazardous to health if consumed to excess. The operation of machinery or driving after the consumption of alcohol is not advisable. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18 years. Casa Lager is more than just beer. It's pure liquid gold. Crafted from the finest local ingredients. To deliver a taste that is somewhat dry, somewhat bitter, but never sweet. It's the taste that stood the test of time. It all comes together with a castle. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's CFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. Don't forget, we've got the Castle Lager World Football Report straight after our play of the day. Where we'll be taking a look at uh, action that transpired over the weekend in Serie A, La Liga, the English Premier League, Bundesliga, as well as the DSTV Premiership in South Africa. But before we get there, plenty of international cricket was on show this past weekend in New Zealand. The Black Caps wrapped up a record innings and 134-run victory over the West Indies before lunch on the fourth day of the first test in Hamilton after finally breaking a rearguard action from Jermaine Blackwood and Alzari Joseph. Nothing much to talk about there. New Zealand totally dominant versus the Windies in that match. In South Africa, the second one-day international between South Africa and England, well, it did not take place today as scheduled. And this, after the first one-day international, which was meant to be played over the weekend, was also cancelled because two members of staff at the hotel 
where England was staying uh, tested positive of the coronavirus. So that tour is up in the balance, up in the air, especially if you consider that England have to fly back uh, to Great Britain on Thursday. Now, the action that was really of interest was down under in Australia where the hosts were up against the Spice Boys of India and their skipper Virat Kohli has identified Hadik Pandya as their bankable match winner for the next four to five years after the all-rounder dazzled in their series clinching T20 international victory over Australia yesterday. India needed 25 runs off the last two overs and Pandya delivered in style, smashing two sixes in the final over to secure a six-wicket victory with two balls to spare. Barry, have they finally found a successor to MS Dhoni? Because MS Dhoni is the guy who has done that job over the last decade and done it well. Yeah, absolutely. Look, let's, let's uh, cool our heels and, and say that he's, he's certainly in the right direction, Hardik Pandya. Um, he has made uh, a few match-winning performances before. Um, Will's listen, a long handle. Uh, he, he really does. And he knows how to counter-attack, which is a, a good asset to have. For a, for a batter so uh, for me yes he's on the right track to becoming that and we saw some of the best of him in this game but let's let's also cool our heels on the basis that remember Australia was missing Mitchell Stark Josh Hazelwood so when you've got that arsenal I would want to see him against that sort of arsenal because Mitchell Stark is going to make you think about what the shots that you need to play and your shot selection because he's going to also counter attack on you but for now Yes, it's a, it's definitely a thumbs up for Hardik Pandya. Okay, the tail of the tape in that uh, second T20 International Australia 194 for five at uh, the Sydney Cricket Ground. It looked like a match winning total. Matthew Wade, the stand-in skipper, 58. Steve Smith, the 46. And then Natarajan, uh, uh, the pick of the bowlers uh, for India, 2 for 20. India, in reply, they looked like they would fall short until that magical innings of 42 not out from Hardik Pandya. They made 195 for four. She Ika Dawan set it all up up top with 52 and Virat Kohli wasn't too bad. He was handy with a valiant 40. India winning by six wickets with two balls to spare to take an unassailable 2-0 lead in the three-match T20 series. Let's hear from the victorious skipper Virat Kohli. You know, the, uh, we've played really well as a, as a team in T20 cricket. The fact that we don't have um, the likes of Rohit and Bumrah not playing, uh, two of our um, you know established uh, white ball players, um, then to win like this, uh, two in a row, I think it's it's outstanding effort uh, from the whole team and something that as a captain makes me very proud that you know guys are standing up, putting their hand up, as I said in the in the at the toss time, at the important moments uh, for the team and winning those situations which eventually won us these two games. Everyone has played 14 games. At least, uh, you know, recently of T20 cricket, so they know inside out what the uh, what the plans are and what they want to execute. I think Natarajan with the ball was outstanding today. I think Shardul bowled uh, nicely as well. Um, and um, you know, we just we just kept them down to a total which we thought was quite chaseable with a small boundary. Um, and then Hardik finishing off the game, Shikhar with a really good knock in between. Opening partnership was good. Shreyas, you know, finishing it off with Hardik. So I think it's it's contributions from the whole team that make you feel like you know you're a strong side and you'll you'll keep getting better because the younger guys coming in are taking opportunities and putting their hand up at the important moments see Virat Kohli talking about contributions from the whole team. Younger guys putting their hand up for the Spice Boys. And they will need to do so, Barry. The tour started off rather badly by their standards. They lost the one-day international series 2-1. They've now bounced back. They've uh, uh, put the T20 international series in the pocket because they have an unassailable lead. But everything is building up rather nicely, isn't it, for the Test Series. Yeah. Four tests uh, that will be played, of course. It's always a busy summer in Australia as far as the cricket is concerned. And everything sort of like builds up to the 26th of December the Boxing, Boxing Day, Day test yeah. in Melbourne at the MCG where there could be uh, COVID allowing 99,000 fans in that arena to see the Spice wow. Boys and this is the series that matters isn't it? Yep. The ODI the T20 series that's all fun Yes, but it's all about the test series Well like you call it proper cricket isn't yeah. it? <laughs> the test series so I'm sure look uh, in truth the touring side was getting their eye in for when they uh, get to put on the, 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 the uh, Lily White as they used to be called uh, yeah, the creams for Australia the creams for Australia <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and run out and in truth red ball cricket is very different in its dynamic uh, yeah. so listen you can't blitz and you can't you, you, your shot selection has to be proper so it's, it's it, by its very name 
it's a test so for me that's where we're going to see which side it is headed in the right direction Virat Kohli will not be available big blow mm. surely for massive, India it massive. kind of like tips things in Australia's face it certainly does because if you want somebody who's got the temperament for test cricket it's, it's got to be Virat Kohli Hi, I'm JC Creel, Springbok and Blue Bulls backline player. You are listening to ZFM Sports. Around the world in 60 seconds. International Sports News. All right, we take off in England where head coach Eddie Jones uh, called criticism of his side style of play. Totally disrespectful after his side beat France 22-19 in extra time uh, to win the Autumn Nations Cup at Twickenham. England scored a last-minute try to take it to extra time before Owen Farrell kicked the decisive penalty. The emphasis on using a kicking game resulted in boos from the crowd and criticism from several former Players and uh, Mike says that a uh, third choice, third string France side in Spain, Kenya's uh, Kibawat Candy smashed a half marathon world record by 29 seconds, becoming the first person to break 58 minutes at the Valencia Half Marathon. Candy, who finished second at the World Half Marathon Championships in Gdania in uh, Poland, of course, that was in October, finished the Spanish annual race in 57 minutes and 32 seconds, uh, breaking the previous record record of 58 minutes and one second set by compatriot Jeffrey Komworo uh, in September 2019. Wrap it up in Bahrain where George Russell admitted he was absolutely gutted after an incredible yet heartbreaking Mercedes debut at the Sakir Grand Prix finished without a deserved maiden Formula One win. Mercedes meanwhile praised the British youngster and have revealed that the colossal pit stop error, the first stage of two huge tyre blows to Russell's chances, was caused by radio failure. Don't miss the full Formula One report, which is on, of course, tomorrow's show. The Castle Lager Premier Soccer League, La Liga, Serie A, the English Premier League, the Bundesliga. It all comes together with the Castle on the Castle Lager World Football Report. All the rivalry. Here is Harry Kane for Tottenham. Stars. Talk about impudence. Talk about improvisation. Talk about Sadio Mane. And all the game changing moments. And Raheem Sterling rattles at home. And once more, City are in front in a choice. All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. It was another high-scoring weekend in England and Crystal Palace led the way with a thumping 5-1 victory over West Brom. And of course, all that coming when West Brom was down to 10 men and they paid a very heavy price with four goals conceded when they were a man down. A result elsewhere saw Everton and Burnley uh, share the spoils in a one-all draw. Manchester City played some good football at times, but they didn't really put Fulham to the score as they won 2-0. Chelsea with an impressive 3-1 victory over Leeds United. Frank Lampard keeping his charges in the hunt for what would be a welcome title in West London. Sheffield United, they competed gamely but they conceded in the last minute versus last Leicester City. Jamie Vardy with the winner there as Leicester City won 2-1. But the big game of the weekend was the not London derby and Arsenal capitulated 2-0 to their rivals Tottenham Hotspur who scored courtesy of Jung Min Son and Harry Kane surprise surprise the usual suspects and the man who engineered that in front of 2,000 fans at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium is Jose Mourinho I think it was a big game uh, not just because it's Tottenham Arsenal but it was a big game in every sense um, I want to give a good words Congratulations to Mikel, because he gave us a very difficult game. Uh, tactically, they are very good. They were very well organized. They were building with uh, with four, defending with five. Then in the second half, they were trying to to find uh, triangles on the sides. They gave us problems, problems that we managed to to resolve because the players in this moment they have good tactical culture, and even above that, they have an incredible 
an incredible spirit. But they gave us they gave us problems because they are a good team and he's a good coach. Um, but we deserve to win, I guess, because uh, two amazing goals and then all is very solid. Uh, even in the second half, of course, we dropped uh, uh, the block and uh, we normally do the change uh, Geo with with Tangi and without Tangi. We were a bit short in, in there and uh, Gio is in the phase where to play 90 minutes on Thursday today uh, to play 90 again was, was too much. So we were reading the game and making the changes to win it because 2-0 uh, the game was, was in our hands against a great and difficult opponent. But I, I, I believe my boys deserve it. Z. Hello, it's a 2-0. Jose Mourinho says the game was in our hands. There was no need for us to go gung-ho. There was no need for us to be adventurous. We had the points. It was all about protecting the lead and the three points. And that's exactly what Jose did. Yeah, they did that. You know, I was laughing about it. I think the last uh, 30 minutes, they were just sitting there. Even Harry Kane was deep there in, the, in, their, in, their, in their own box, just waiting for the break. And uh, I think they, they studied Arsenal. They knew how Arsenal are going to play. They're going to just pump in cross. They're like, well, let's just keep our shape. Let's stand there. Let them have the ball in the wide areas. Let them cross it and we deal with it. And Arsenal didn't even win one cross. They got short guys, Saka, mm. Obama Yang. They were playing against those big uh, uh, Dyer, Spurs. Yeah, it, those was, guys, it was uh, not going to uh, be easy. Toby Alderfeld, it was not going to work. They were clearing everything. And Barry, you, you've got to say that a lot of people questioned the appointment of Jose Mourinho when he came in at Tottenham. They said, listen, he's not a right fit to Spurs. Spurs like to play open, attacking, entertaining football. And they wondered how the likes of Harry Kane would adjust to Mourinho's methods but this is testament to how good Mourinho is as a man manager yeah. that he's managed to get the likes of Harry Kane playing his well Alois yeah. has talked about in the second half Harry Kane was deep in his own half mm. defending mm. playing yes. almost as a midfielder yeah, yeah. and it's testament to Jose Mourinho's uh, uh, man management it, it absolutely is and also um, getting the players to understand what he wants out of them uh, there's a name I'm going to throw in there and Harry Kane has certainly taken it on board but you look at a player like Tongi uh, Domele he was bought and everyone was questioning did they, did they waste money what on earth but we're beginning to see once again the player that we saw as one of the best midfielders in Europe so again uh, Jose Mourinho has been has got a way of getting through to players it may not be palatable because we hear him criticize them in public we hear him say things that are not necessarily PC but it works for the players somehow yeah there's uh, there's something that uh, Tim Sherwood you know I wanna I wanna, I wanna um, add on what, to yeah. what you say Tim Sherwood on TV was saying that Jose Mourinho what he does he is uh, he is like uh, too smart he's cunning what he does he forms a cartel yeah. in his team whenever he wants a team he forms a cartel for his team he looks at the influential guys in the team he gets them he makes them the cracks of the team yeah. so that they are now the ones that are delivering the message to the mm, other players right, right. they are the ones that are controlling right. the other players and so you can he, see the cartel yes you so he sits it. there yeah. and he formed his cartel is now doing the job yeah. Eric, Eric Kane is actually the leader of that cartel yeah, Eric at this Dyer's moment the Eric Dyer thank you Dyer, 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 Loris Holberg yeah. Loris, Loris, Loris yes. Yes. those yeah. are the guys That's that, what that, that are pushing the Jose yeah. Mourinho way of exactly. doing things and of course that, that victory in front of 2,000 fans uh, taking uh, Tottenham Hotspur back to the top of the English Premier League uh, standings. Liverpool then moved level on points with Spurs at the top of the table as they put in a show at Anfield uh, for the returning supporters with a thumping 4-0 victory over Wolves. Barry, they, they usually say that Wolves is the ultimate test. Yeah. That's the team yeah. you gauge progress and development by. Liverpool right now missing a number of key players yeah. but it looks like whenever Liverpool has got a big game they say the same thing about Spurs yeah. Liverpool beat Spurs and beat them convincingly they say something about Wolves Wolves were thumped yeah. totally outclassed yesterday this Liverpool side is a lot better than people think certainly and uh, the one element that has always been criticised of Liverpool even by Liverpool fans has got to do with the squad depth and mm. now I think everybody will sit back and think to themselves yeah no Liverpool has got squad Depth. How good it is Curtis be, Jones? Curtis Jones, it may not be fashionable. You may not be happy about saying that the starting goalkeeper in a match against Wolves is going to be Kiwin Kelleher. Mm. But my <laughs> God, the clean sheet will turn your head, that's for sure. So the, the players like Curtis Jones, the players like um, young, what's his name? Nico Williams. Nico Williams. They, they, they are showing up 
at a level and in a way that nobody would have expected. And again, if we can give Jose Mourinho credit, we have to give Jurgen Klopp credit as well. Uh, absolutely. And of course, uh, just uh, a look at the standings. Uh, Tottenham Hotspur and Liverpool, 24 points, followed hotly, hot, hot, hot on their heels by Chelsea with 22 points there in third. Leicester is fourth with 21 points. And then just five points behind the leaders are Manchester United and they have a game in hand and Manchester United Aloisa they won over the weekend a come from behind a victory over West Ham it's a game in which Manchester United showed character but apart from character it's also a game in which Ole Gunnar Solskjaer I think he's shown as a manager because he made the right changes he made the right calls in the second half and it paid off for his team handsomely yeah I think I think I think he did well you know he has been criticized that he is uh, he's just laid back he sits and watches his team crumble but this time around you know they consider the goal first but they stick it up and he actually showed that he can actually do something changed the team around and then they they came back two quick goals i think that changed everything for them and the third goal was always going to be coming after that and uh, that was well done to manchester united you know sometimes manchester united you don't know which team is going to be arriving in a game and when they start playing but yesterday they actually showed character that they can actually uh, fight for something not the championship but they will be somewhere in the top four uh, somewhere in the top four alois who was your standout player in england this past weekend yeah, I thought uh, two outstanding players for me it was Harry Kane and uh, and Son. You know, if I had a trophy, I would share them like Peter and uh, and George Nechironga that yeah. other year. <laughs> you know, I, I would. But then here on the station we want one, mm. so I'll go with Harry Kane because of the uh, leadership qualities as well and because of the uh, goal scoring record as well that he broke as well. So I'll go with Harry Kane. He's my star of the week in English. A star of the week in England, Harry Kane having an absolutely barnstorming season. We've got to say he's the front runner right now for player of the season. Well, the front runners in the Z Fantasy League uh, standings are Clive Runganga, Chele Chele, you have 768 points. In second place is Hilary Giwa, Larry FC, 750 points. And then uh, Terence Ngomani, box to box, Calvert, 742. So it looks like those three are holding fort at the top of the Z Fantasy League standings with a very little movement as far as the leaders are concerned. There is action in in the Premier League tonight and it's Brighton who take on Southampton in a South Coast derby. From Rufaro to Barberfield, Mandava to Nyamunga, all the perfect moments in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League come together on ZFM Sport. Horsepower unmatched. Talk to beat the best. Speed unrivaled sleek and easy on the eye let's get behind the wheel of football engineered to perfection the Bundesliga made in Germany all right, let's go to Germany now. Hertha Berlin put on a show at home. Three one wins over Union Berlin. A two all draw between Cologne and Wolfsburg. Arminia Bielefeld one two one against Mainz. Uh, Freiburg played out a two all draw with Borussia Munchen Gladbach, and then Stuttgart getting a good win on the road to Werder Bremen. That one ending two one in favour of Stuttgart. Bayer Leverkusen uh, showing that they have some class. Three nil over Schalke. Uh, but the big match was Bayern Munich versus. This is RB Leipzig and Bayern Munich boss Hansi Flick saying that he was satisfied with the side's three all draw against RB Leipzig on Saturday uh, despite their defensive frailties. Julian Nagelsmann admitted his side played against Bayern with one eye on the UEFA Champions League match against Manchester United tomorrow. It ended 3 3, so perhaps he's alluding to the fact that had they been focused, they'd have won. Danach muss man leider sehr viel wechseln, weil wir auch den Dienstag mit dem Auge haben müssen. Das ist In the second half, we had to make a lot of substitutions because we had the game on Tuesday against Manchester United in mind. Additionally, we had some players that were slightly injured. The Champions League game on Tuesday is very important. We're not yet in the round of 16, but we want to get there. That's why we had to make some substitutions today, and that broke the rhythm of our game. 
especially because some players had to play in new positions. Then we conceded a goal, but that was a good play by Bayern. The same goes for our third goal. It was a good play. Z. My goodness, uh, Bayern delivers goals. RB Leipzig again delivers goals. We didn't think that it would end with a six goal thriller like it did, Mike. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, once Bayern Munich uh, restored parity at 1-1, mm. uh, I thought there was only ever going to be one winner. I thought Bayern Munich would then uh, score the second and the third uh, and win. And even when they went ahead, Bayern Munich, you, uh, you thought, listen, uh, this is it. Yeah. But uh, RB Leipzig keep on attacking. Uh, and we saw that in midweek as well in that game versus the Turks. The Turks, they, yeah, yeah. they attack. The only problem is is that they're leaving the back door open uh, yeah. and so they're conceding goals. Uh, but again, against Bayern Munich they played Bayern Munich in a manner that very few teams play uh, against Bayern Munich which is they attack them mm. uh, and we talked about Bayern Munich that you know what you've got to fight fire with fire yeah. you you can't sit back but Bayern okay. Munich have got too much quality too much creativity mm. they're going to pick you apart yeah. and at some point they're going to score so Bayern Munich you've got to push their full backs back yeah. you've got to make sure that you push the centre backs back and when you do that you mm. force their midfielders back as well in the central areas meaning that they have to transition for longer distances yeah. from their own uh, defensive third to get a goal down your end and it just gives you a chance yeah, in terms yeah. of regrouping reorganizing defensively that's what RB Leipzig did and it nearly paid off uh, they were a good value for their point if not for three points Mike pointing out there some of the stakes that uh, you have to compete and the level that you have to compete against uh, Bayern Munich the other one is that you have to uh, 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 compete in the power stakes because usually they overpower teams shocking that RB Leipzig wasn't overpowered in that game. Exactly, Barry. You remember when they played against Borussia Dortmund, I said if Borussia Dortmund, they, they want to win against Bayern Munich, they have to push, they have to play with the high intensity. Yeah. You can't sit back, like Mike said, you can't. You need to match them power, speed, everything. You just have to go. If you lose, you lose knowing that, you know, we gave it our goal. Yeah. We gave it our best. You can't just sit there and say and respect them. Don't respect them. Go out and play. Especially when it comes to intensity and power. Mm. That's where you need to match them so that you can push them yeah. and you can get lucky, score one or two. Then you, you're in at the chance. RB Leipzig looking good value and I'm sure that's sending shivers down the spine of Alois Bunjira given that they play Manchester United in the Champions League tomorrow in a do or die encounter. <laughs> in other news out of Germany, a stunning strike from 18 year old Giovanni Reina gave Borussia Dortmund a one all draw at Eintracht Frankfurt. Leaves us with one bit of business out of Germany and that is our star of the week, Michael. Well, my star of the week varies from that game. Uh, Bayern Munich uh, taking on uh, RB Leipzig. Uh, the goals came from Thomas Muller with a brace and then Musiala uh, got the, 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 the equaliser right. for, for Bayern Munich. You'd think I'd pick one of those, but no. Mm. I'm going to th- uh, pick the catalyst. Mm. The man who provided all all three assists uh, for Bayern Munich and he was the reason why they were able to get back into the game and almost nick it from RB Leipzig and that is Kingsley Coleman he yeah. played the game of his life Kingsley Coleman when he's on he certainly he's a is damn good on he really is uh, tonight's action in Germany Hoffenheim takes on Augsburg Alcohol may be hazardous to health if consumed to excess. The operation of machinery or driving after the consumption of alcohol is not advisable. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18 years. Castle Lager is more than just beer. It's pure liquid gold. Crafted from the finest local ingredients. To deliver a taste that is somewhat dry, somewhat bitter, but never sweet. It's the taste that stood the test of time. It all comes together with a castle. We are your station of choice. The People's Station. ZFM Stereo. All right, uh, let's give you the rest of your European roundup. Uh, that's mainly Spain and Italy. Your results are out of Spain. Athletic Club beaten, beaten at home by Celta Vigo 2-0. Levante emphatic winners uh, over Getafe 3-0. Granada and Huesca an entertaining 3-0 draw. Osasuna beaten by Real Betis at home 2-0. Villarreal and Elke could not be separated. That one ended goalless, as did the match between Alaves and Real Sociedad. Let's go to the capital, 
Madrid, where Atletico Madrid overcame a rusty first half display to beat Real Valladolid 2 0, courtesy of goals from Thomas Lemar and Marcos Lorente, the conqueror of Anfield. Liverpool fans will remember him for his match winning performance at Anfield in last season's Champions League. Real Madrid beat Sevilla 1 0 to alleviate some pressure on Zinedine Zidane. But those two teams winning, Barcelona losing away at Cadiz 2-1. Barry, your stand-up player in Spain? Stand-up player in Spain, it's got to be Marcos Oriente, the man who you call the the, the vanquisher of Anfield. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, no, I think he, he had a phenomenal game uh, for Atletico Madrid. And when he's on song, this boy, he really is something. I, I don't remember him f- fondly, Barry. Is it a vanquisher of <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's it's not with fondness, uh, believe me. It's 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 not with fondness. So uh, that is who he is. Now let's go to Italy. Your results: Spezia beaten at home uh, by Lazio two one. Juventus uh, two one victors over Torino in the Turin derby. Internationale Inter Milan three one winners uh, over Bologna. Verona one all draw with Cagliari. Parma and Benevento cannot be separated. Goalless draw. Roma and Sassuolo goalless draw. And the match between Udinese and Atalanta was cancelled. Elsewhere, Napoli, emphatic 4-0 winners over Crotone. And then AC Milan with a gutsy 2-1 victory over Sampdoria. Leading the way in Italy is AC Milan, 26 points. They remain unbeaten. The only side unbeaten in Italy. They are followed by Inter Milan, who are on 21 points, 5 points adrift. And then Juventus are in fourth, with Napoli climbing up to third. Very your stand-up player? Uh, I would say Ashraf Hakimi of uh, Inter. I think uh, two goals and also a phenomenal performance. It's easy for us to pick attackers, uh, but in truth, you have to also show up in terms of your ability, and he certainly did. Uh, tonight's action in Italy, La Viola, Fiorentina. They take on Genoa. Quick results out of the DSTV Premiership. Uh, just looking down the list here, one all draw between Maritzburg United and Mamelodi Sundowns. Ernst Minendorf proving that he's the tonic out of for the team of a choice uh, Cape Town City and Orlando Pirates playing out a two all a draw and I have to talk about Chakuba Chamadze Vandila they played out <laughs> a one all draw I don't like that too. United. <laughs> <laughs> because of the Vitz connection. <laughs> uh, and former Mamelodi Sundowns head coach Peter Mozumane on Saturday evening clinched a historic second treble of trophies in one season after guiding Al Akhli uh, to Egypt Cup in a penalty shootout win over Tal Al Gaish. We are out of time, but tomorrow we have to talk about Peter Mozumane. My God, this man is writing history upon history upon history. We'll catch you tomorrow. Don't miss it. May God richly bless you. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Manandi, out.